in those cases, the court might order the executor or the trustee to pay your attorney's fees personally. Hmm. But actually, the courts are fairly, f very rarely do that. Mm -hmm. I'm not exactly sure why, but usually the attitude is you got the inheritance, you got rid of the executor, um, uh, you surcharged him because he made some bad investment decisions, that's pretty much enough. They usually don't allocate attorney's fees. Okay. How long does it usually take to administer a typical estate or a trust? Well, it depends. Um, the theory behind a trust was that it was cheaper and could be done quicker. Um, that's only partly true. Uh, the statutory probate fees in California are actually pretty modest. Uh, for a while there, I think it was the uh, ARP uh, was complaining about these huge statutory probate fees, but really lawyers can charge by the hour pretty quickly and get it up there pretty fast. So if there's no limit, the statutory fee is actually a limit on what you can get for certain activities. Uh, administering a living trust can be more expensive. Hmm. Also, as far as the quickness is concerned, uh, a will, a probate usually has to stay open for a minimum of four months mm -hmm. to give notice to creditors. Right. So I've never seen a probate really that closed any quicker than six months. Uh, regardless of whether it's a will or a trust, if you have an estate that's large enough that requires an estate tax return. Now that won't be this year. If you died this year, there won't be any estate tax because Congress didn't get around to doing what they were supposed to do last year. Right, so this is 2010 for people who watch it some other weird time. But unless Congress <laughs> does do something about it, by 2011 the estate tax will be imposed again. The estate tax is all due and payable nine months after death. Mm -hmm. And since you don't have to pay it early and you get to keep the interest earned on the money mm -hmm. until you pay it, there's no reason to close the estate before that nine month period is over. Mm -hmm. So I'd say in that case, if you've got an estate where you're gonna have to pay estate tax, uh, you're not going to close it in less than nine months, mm -hmm. usually about a year. Mm -hmm. Now, again, if you've got a huge estate with lots of real estate or businesses, it can be open for years. Yes. If you've got something that's all cash, you can probably close it within nine months. Okay. So it depends upon the size of the estate, the nature of the estate, and that kind of thing. It really doesn't have a whole lot to do with whether you've got a will or a trust anymore. Mm -hmm. But I would think for most families, you know, uh, average, you know, with, you know the, the household home, you know, few bank accounts, what have you, maybe an investment account, you know, probably about a year or so is a reasonable time, I would think. Well, yes, but keep in mind if, let's say you've got a buried couple. Okay. Uh, even if you, if you had a trust, the first spouse dies, Yeah. Uh, you really don't have to do a whole lot uh, during that first spouse, after that yeah, first spouse. So that could actually be pretty darn That fast. could be done in about 30 to 60 days. It's yeah. a pretty easy yeah. process. You get the old trustees, the dead trustees' name taken off, right. the new trustees' name put on solely, a couple of things about organizing the accounts for bookkeeping purposes, and that's pretty much about it. Mm -hmm. um, if, even if you don't have a trust, even if you had a will, if pretty much everything is community property, you can get it all set aside by what's called a spousal property petition in 30 to 60 days. It mm -hmm. can be done pretty quickly. Yeah. Most uh, longer term probates or trust administrations involve a situation where either a surviving spouse has died or an unmarried person now has died. And uh, there's uh, other things that have to be done to distribute it to a number of different people. Right, okay. Um, <clears throat> what accountings are required for estates and trusts? And when do you think it's appropriate to waive an accounting? Well, every fiduciary, be he, uh, he an executor, an administrator, or a trustee, conservator, or guardian, is always under some duty to account to the beneficiaries for what he's done with the money. This is a cash basis accounting. It's actually pretty simple. It says, you've got to say, this is what I had when it started. These are the receipts that came in during the administration period. These are the disbursements, the money I paid out. These are the gains and losses on sales, and this is what's left. Uh, everyone has to do an accounting, uh, theoretically at least once a year, unless the trust says something otherwise. Also, if you want to compel somebody to do an accounting who hasn't done his accounting within a year, you've got to demand it and then wait 60 days before you can compel him to account to do the accounting, at least insofar as the trust is concerned. Mm -hmm. So um, basically, everybody's got to do an accounting. They usually do it themselves, uh, but if they don't, you can compel them to do so after you give them that, that demand for uh, an accounting. Okay. So basically, they're supposed to be doing one every year. Now, what about a waiver? Well, frequently, lawyers will send beneficiaries a document asking them to waive an accounting. Uh, the bottom line is don't do it. Oh. There's no good reason to do it. They'll say, well, we can close up the estate quicker. We can do it cheaper. Mm -hmm. Well, if it's an intestate succession or a statutory probate will, that's not true. 
Mm -hmm. uh, you are not going to close it any sooner, and uh, as a, and you're not going to do it any cheaper because you can't charge extra for doing the accounting. Mm -hmm. If it's a trust, yes, I suppose the lawyers can charge a little bit more money for the time and effort they spend putting together the accounting, but it's relative peanuts. It should be anyway, and I don't think there's ever a good reason to compel an accounting. Without an accounting, you really don't know what the executor or trustee has done with the money. Mm -hmm. You don't know if he's gone ahead and used part of it to buy a BMW or a Jaguar or something like that. So I would never waive an accounting if I were a beneficiary. Okay. Unless well, ex there's one exception to that. If I'm the sole, if I'm the executor and trustee and the sole beneficiary of the estate, sure, then I'll yeah. waive an accounting. Okay. Um, running out of time here, but uh, there's one thing that a question that I quite often get, so maybe we should just go ahead and address it, and that is. Uh, if I inherit some assets, in other words, assets are distributed to me from an estate or trust, is that subject to income tax? Uh, generally speaking, no. Uh, the assets you inherit are not taxable income to you. Uh, there's something called income in respect of a decedent, but that is income that is theoretically taxed because it was taxable to the decedent as opposed to you. So it's like a retirement account or IRA exactly. or something like exactly. that? Exactly. If you have an IRA when you pull the money out, you've got to pay income tax on it then. Uh, but generally speaking, no. Uh, in uh, the United States, uh, there is or used to be and will be an estate tax. State tax is a low bracket of about 35 to 45 percent, high bracket of 50 to 55 percent. But there's an unlimited marital deduction, which means that it goes to the surviving spouse, it goes tax-free. And uh, beginning next year, the exemption amount will be a million dollars if it goes to anybody else. Yeah. So we'll have to see what happens with that uh, big question mark, what's going to happen next Year, so it's just total speculation. Okay, well, um, we're about out of time, so maybe uh, do you have any uh, uh, just, uh, parting words of wisdom maybe for beneficiaries? There's a, a lot more lawsuits being filed over estates today. I don't know what's, uh, what, the prop, what the reason for that is. It could be the fact that the lawyers don't have enough work to do in other areas. It could be that uh, our parents' generation or your generation and my generation is now wealthier than our children may ever be for the first time in the society of the United States. Uh, our children are not as interdirected as we are. Mm -hmm. They may not have the economic opportunities we do. Uh, today's children may be a bit spoiled by the lifestyle we supply to them. Uh, for example, uh, we have, uh, they want their freedom at 18, but okay. they thoroughly expect us to support them in the style to which they wish to become accustomed. Uh, but by and large, uh, it, it could be for second marriages, uh, situations like that. Uh, men are often uh, uh, un un untrustworthy in the second half of their life. They promise their second wife uh, one thing and they tell their kids by the prayer marriage something else. So a lot of that has created a lot of litigation over estates okay. these days. We're all out of time. So Mike, thank you very much again. Uh, folks, I hope this has been helpful and we'll uh, uh, be some good information for you if you are a beneficiary. And we'll see you next time on Financial Insider Weekly.